Hi friends, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles. We are going to make a fun uh, lunch bag junk journal. This is super easy, but has a great impact. And I am using papers from The Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady by Edith Holden. So we're gonna go through the whole process and um, hopefully do this in one video. If it gets a little long, I may do a part two. But I'm also thinking, by the time I put this up, I'll have made a decision. I may do a new series with different types of projects, folios, junk journals, things like that, that you can make with paper bags. So, um, lunch bags, whatever you want to call them. So, if that's of interest, let me know. Leave me a comment. I think I'll do at least a couple. And then if you guys like it, we can keep going. So, this one is made with one, two three bags so there's six is that three or four one two three yeah because that's the middle four five six so six six nice pages it got nice and chunky you can obviously make it a little bit bigger this was a request actually and I wanted to mention that I have a pen I'll pull out things and show you guys while I'm talking I have a, a pen on Pinterest of one of these that I made using using some really pretty Edith Holden papers years ago before I was really doing tutorials, but I did a little flip through pen, pen on Pinterest and someone found it and asked if, if I had a tutorial or would I do a tutorial? A little belly band. So I was like, sure, I, you know, I could do that. And I went to my stash of books and did not have enough of my Edith Holden papers um, to make one, you know, in this design and I ordered some Edith Holden books. <laughs> I got three um, ones, the 1975, I believe ones. Um, we'll look at that in a moment. Uh, edition off of thrift books. And while I was waiting for them to come in, I found a paper kit on Etsy and I used this bird and a couple of papers um, in another video recently that's Edith Holden inspired. So just kind of in, in that genre or idea. And so I love the little flips and all the, all the big, nice, huge spots to add treasures and things. Um, but... And we'll talk about this paper kit too in a minute, and I'll link that for you in the description so you don't have to worry about that. But I mostly, I used some pieces from that, mostly pages from the book, and layered it all together and gave whoever's going to end up using this journal, hopefully, lots of beautiful things to look at and to consider. And we can add a lot more journaling cards so that you have plenty of space to journal. I did put in a scrappy pad of coffee dyed paper in this one. Uh, again, optional, we don't have to do that. Uh, and added extra flips and flaps and tuck spots. So lot, lots to do with this one. Um, the original one is no longer in my possession. It's long gone. I don't remember if I gave it as a gift or what happened, but it did have a faux button. I just, you know, punched circles, little closure, and I wrapped ribbon around it. But this one I decided to do the the tie on the outside and just, you know, make it like a little tassel or dangle, which I really love. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. But again, depending on your style and what you like, you can adjust yours and use whatever papers you like, of course, as always. So the actual construction is really easy. So let's start there. So I'll set that aside and I'm going to make this one the same size. So I need, uh, la, da, 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 da. I need three bags. Yeah, three bags. And then we'll have six pages and you can use the craft color that works really well too. I just happen to have white ones. So that's what we're using. So I'm going to use what I have. And we're going to fold each of the lunch bags in half. And then we're going to make a decision of which way to turn them. So fold your lunch bags in half if you're crafting with me. 
and if you want your stuff more pages, go for it. Okay, and then what I do is I alternate. So I'm gonna have my cover be, be a pocket. That, that's how I did that one. Uh, you, you could have your cover be this and have like a flip on the front and it be the closed end of the bag. That's okay too, but I'm gonna make my cover have a pocket. And then I'm gonna alternate. So the next page, I want to turn this way so that I have a pocket, no pocket, pocket, and then we'll turn it like this. Oops. Is it like this or like this? I think it's like this, yes. <laughs> when I said alternate, it wasn't supposed to be that hard. So have your opening on the right-hand side for your first page. Your next page, have it be the side that's not open. And then your third page, have it be the one on the right, okay? Every other one. And just get them living happily together, because these are gonna be the pages of your journal. And I'm gonna do what I pretty much always do, which is grab some jumbo paper clips, and I'm just gonna clip it together. Now, all I did for these is because I want to use some of the fun yarns and fibers and stuff for my binding is I'm going to poke two holes. That's what I did for this one is it's just a two hole punch and I'm going to use my crocodile Big Bite. And I do want these even and centered. So let's let's get the ruler out and take just a moment and find my pencil. And I'm going to, it's right at five inches, and that gives us kind of understanding the height of this uh, lunch bag journal. It's a tit titch more than five, like five and one, one eighth, something like that. I'm gonna come up one and a half inches and then um, come down one and a half so that we have the same amount of space from the top and the bottom of our journal with our holes. And then this is what's nice about this particular hole punch or big bite is, you know, it has a huge, a very large reach. In fact, I can have it turned this way and punch the hole, okay? If you wanted to do more than two holes and thread, thread or sew it. You could just do a normal, like a three pamphlet stitch if you prefer. Lots of choices. But I am going to hold mine together similarly to how I did this one. I've tried to keep everything within arm's reach, but it didn't quite happen. I have these fun yarns and fibers. I think I told you guys I got one time at a, a like a flea market kind of thing. It was a parking lot where everybody had all their stuff. And I bought a bunch from a lady that day. One, two, I'm gonna do three times, so about 15 inches. I'm not quite sure what I did with the other one, but we'll see, we'll see how this goes. And I'm not going to put this on a needle. I've got a fairly big hole there. I'm just going to do my best to get it threaded through together. And I want to tie mine on the outside because I'm going to add some more threads to it to make kind of that tassel y look. All right, let me find my ends. I'm probably making this more complicated than it has to be. I didn't pick you know, the easiest threads either, but that's okay. Let's see if I kept it, yay, I did it. Okay, so since I want to tie on the outside, I gotta, I gotta convince these little fellas to go through the hole this way. There we go, not too hard. So that'll be our center, uh, part of our signature. And this one, I obviously put the holes, um, only about probably an inch up and down. And this one I went I went further in. I, personal preference. I just 
kind of whatever I was feeling today is, is where the holes ended up being. I think to me what's important is that they're the same from the top and the bottom to make it look neat. And the first thing I'm going to do is make sure it's nice and snug. And I'm going to do my best to tie just a regular old knot here. Yep. Okay. And that is as simple as it gets, isn't it? <laughs> so I kind of wish I brought my holes holes closer to the top, but that's okay. It'll still be a cute dangle. And we can take the paper clips off now. Let's look at our pages, very happy. And then to make this just um, have a little, little more bulk but easier than having to thread it through is I'm just going to, and I'm not gonna worry too much about the length. I'm trying to get them, if it's doubled over, approximately the length of these. And these threads are pretty thin. And so what I'm what I did with my original one is I then tied little knots in them, and I think it just looks really cute. And it also, if there is a chance it was going to start to fray, it would help stop that. So depending on the yarns or the threads you're using, it may or may not lend itself to just adding the knot right there but I think mine looks good like that and it doesn't even matter if I've got the same two that I'm tying I'm just gonna have extra knots and I know it's nice and secure and I think I want one more of this thread on here too and then I can sit here and, and tie knots. I'll tie a couple, but we won't do all of them right now. All right, and it just gives it a nice little look here on the spine. If you want to, you could tie yours on the inside and um, have them hang down and put beads or buttons. You could tie a bow inside, <laughs> you know. Again, depending on how you choose to do yours, uh, it'll it'll can give it a whole different look. So then all I did is I took each thread and I just randomly added some knots. I just thought it gave it some more texture and I like how it looked and I'm not even worried about if they're spaced the same or not. And then at the end I trimmed them. So they're approximately the same length. But again, not too worried about it. I kind of like the, the look. On these threads, if the knot catches, I double it. If it doesn't, I don't worry about it. You know, so that the knot's a little bit bigger. Like this one, it's going to catch. So I've got a little bit bigger knot. And I am, like I said, I'm going to decide how long I need these to be. I do want a knot a little bit closer to the bottom because this thread does tend to kind of pull on itself. So this is something I don't like necessarily, like I don't knit or crochet. I always wanted to, but I can't take on a new craft right now. So don't tell me, Pam, you can learn. Just can't take on a new craft right now. But um, this is something I envision I could have these here and then like if I'm watching a movie or something with my husband, I could sit and tie the knots in. This one, you'll see I trimmed. They're approximately the same length, but not exactly. I'm going to leave these like this for right now because I know I'm going to want to tie more knots. And then give them the trim. I don't think it looks too, too crazy leaving them a little wonky. I may trim them off. I get tired of looking at them. Okay, so there we go. So now it really is, honestly, the decorating. So what I did, because I really liked the look of each page having some of the text, and it, the way the book is done, it, it almost looks like, you know, like a handwriting font or something. So we're going to go to our book. I have some pages already torn out, but this is a very classic 
junk journaling book, 1977, not 75, 1977. And... I, I remember the first time I found a copy and I was so excited. And they're not the easiest to find, but again, if you go to thrift books, they sometimes will have them. And I am, I think I've shown you guys this before, but we're going to do, get, grab a few more pages out of here together. I use a seam ripper and I get to the opening of the books, whether it's an Edith Holden book or whatever kind of book I'm trying to take apart. If it's sewn, it helps to pull those stitches with your seam ripper and then your pages come out and now I'm going to have pages to decide it's so hard with this book because I don't like to um, lose any of the beautiful illustrations but there are some pages that have some great text as well that we can use for our journal now you also have pages like this that are sort of glued in that sometimes you have to give it a little more of a tug I'm going to go to the back of the book. I want to get some of the December pages. And, you know, they, they really all mix together, but I was hoping that I could find some with some of the berries or something since I'm kind of in a Christmassy holiday mood, but it's not necessary. And I don't mind if I end up taking, it's pretty, um, you know, taking a bunch of the pages out and then if I don't use them for this project I'll just tuck them back in here so they're ready to go next time so this one is in really nice shape and they're pretty easy to, to grab if you don't have a seam ripper you can try to do it with scissors I find it a little more challenging with the scissors I do try to keep the the lid on that so I don't poke myself. Got a pretty bird. Let's see. Yeah. Really fun. Fun, fun, fun. Now, this one, I was trying to get to these. I was trying to get to that. Okay, this is one of the ones that's kind of glued in. So, the, the two pages that are with this green paper, they're always really heavily... There's a heavy amount of adhesive. So to grab this one, I'm just gonna tear it out carefully. And then, yeah, I think this one, yeah, these are the ones that really aren't sewn in. There's every, every tiny little signature you get to, there's a page like this that they've really glued in. So now we have fun mushrooms and we have those berries I was looking for. Hopefully this is enough, but if not, we can always get our book back out. Now, each page, I already told you, the height is right at five inches. And the width of the page is about five and a quarter. So it is a little bit wider than it is tall. So I, what I did for this one is I just went through and went ahead and tore pages that were about four and three quarters by four and three quarters just to back each of my page. And um, I just found that that was a fairly quick way to prep. And I have not prepped for this video. I didn't tear pages ahead of time. I could have, but we're gonna tear a few and get a few pages layered so you get the, the sense. And like I said, I'm gonna keep an eye on the time. And if I if I need to, what I'll do is turn this into a two-part video where we kind of build the pages um, and some of the pockets today and then the tags and things on the inside in another video. So I'm kind of leaning towards that. I definitely love, see we've got December here and we have December here. So December is going to be a little bit taller and wider if I wanted to use it. I wasn't, I was saving the months from all the other pages because I was thinking, would this not be a super fun way to make some type of uh, calendar or something? So I think I'm just going to save those and not worry about using them. Now, as usual, I love the tear method. I love having, and I save all of these, right? Quotes and words and things. I have a whole, a whole, 
little bin of just from my Edith Holden papers because I love the color. Um, but anyway, I'm using the paper tear method and I am, I like that rough edge and I don't want, it doesn't matter to me if they're not exactly perfect, but I am using my grid to help me get that four and three quarters by four and three quarters square. And even though the book is a little bit wider, I like having the extra, especially on these pockets where there's the notch here. I just, it definitely, the, the this size worked really well for the size lunch bag that I have. And I think that's a pretty standard lunch bag. I don't know, measure yours and make sure before you start tearing your paper up. And like I said, this is definitely not a perfect square, but whichever page I choose to use it on, that's kind of fun. Uh, it it looks fine. It, it nestles in there. And I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, wow, twelve. Now, I didn't do a full one for these pages. So let me count that again because we're going to do different things on the ones that have that little part of the bag. All those different flips and things were built off of these. So let me count that again. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I put that on the back. Normally flip it the other way. I wasn't paying attention. When you're putting yours together, it doesn't matter, but I made sure these flaps were on the inside of that one. And I could take it apart, but we're not going to. It really doesn't matter. We can have a fun flap on the back or I can just cover it up and it's like it never happened. So if I counted correctly, I need nine or 10 <laughs> of these, these size squares. I hope I didn't confuse you guys. So. All I do is I go through, like, and this is a beautiful image, and there's wonderful text, but I know I do not want to sacrifice this bird, or at least not yet. So I go through and see, are there any pages that have text where I'm not losing beautiful images that I know I'm going to want for other things from the book? I like these fall leaves, but I don't mind letting them go for the greater good. So I am going to do one, two, three, four. There really isn't enough. I do like these little numbers here and I could see using this for something. So I'm gonna tear off from this side. No, from this side. I was gonna just tear off the strip and I realized I don't have to do that. One, two, three, four and three quarters. You guys are going to be like, Pam, you're making me crazy. And this is just, again, figuring out how you want to use your book. I could have taken the month off there. One, two, three, four, and three quarters. But this little piece right here, that's kind of what I was trying to get to, is going to be great for one of the pages with the end of the bag. We can tear it um, and piece it together on there. So I'm going to save that and I'm going to save this piece because it may be a good strip or I may want to use that leaf, the numbers. So all stuff I'm going to save. I'm not ready to tear those up. And this is sometimes what takes a while with this type of crafting or at least for me is just really deciding <laughs> which of the pages I'm going to use. Like I like this in the Ivy, but I, I may use some of the, I think I will. We'll use some of the print on this side of the page. I'm gonna keep this December to have for another project. Then I'll have to go sort those out later. So I want another four and three quarter inch, one, two, three, four and three quarter. Now, if you don't wanna watch me tear a bunch of squares, just fast forward. I mean, I may chat and you may miss something, but <laughs> miss, miss me saying something. You're not gonna miss anything for the project. 
if you don't want to watch me tear these. So my encouragement is do what makes you the happiest at this point. If it's going to make you crazy while I do this on camera, instead of being rude and leaving a rude comment, just fast forward and go on to the next project. I hope you guys take that in the spirit. I mean it. You guys are awesome. And I have wonderful folks that watch my videos and I appreciate it. But there is that occasion where people decide it's better to leave a snarky or rude comment than just move on. And we're just not gonna do that. Okay, we're gonna be nice. One, two, three, four, and three quarters. And I could obviously tear more than one page at a time. This paper isn't that thick. The problem is I'm really paying attention to what, where the, the print is on each page that matters to me for this project. So I don't wanna just have a whole bunch of pages stacked together and start tearing them when it may not give me the aesthetic I'm looking for. It would be nice, I will say this, if I could get two per page, but because of how I'm wanting the, again, the font to look on the paper, it just it's just not big enough. Four and three quarters, see, it's just, wait, yeah, it's just, it's not, the book isn't tall enough to give me the number, the inches that I need. Okay. One, two, three, four, and three quarters. So I also want to thank you guys for all the lovely birthday wishes. That was such a nice treat. Um, I didn't expect you guys to do that, but thank you. I, uh, as I said in the last video, when I talked about my birthday, or that's five, I had a lovely day. I got to do exactly what I wanted to do, which was spend time in my craft room, time with my husband. Ooh, now this one I can probably get away with tearing both pages at the same time. Um, I spent time with my puppy dogs. I talked to lots of friends and family members and got sweet messages. It was just lovely. So thank you. Thank you for being a part of that and sending me the well wishes. It made the day special. All right. So now I need one, two, three, four. I'm going to this line because I already have a quarter inch up there. Okay, I think we got two. Yes, I'm happy. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, we're at seven. And when I get these two, we'll be at nine. So we'll start doing some gluing and see, see where we're at. I think I need 10 the way I'm going to do this one. But we're getting close. Four, five. Um. And when the paper wiggles, it's always better to slow down and reset your paper because, you know, hold it well once and tear once. Don't mess up the tear and then not be able to use your paper. Okay. Now, I mentioned the Edith Holden Inspired Digital Kit. And I was going to talk a little bit about that while I'm inking these and starting to glue them to the pages because that's really all we're going to do is I'm just going to pick different ones and lay them down, ink and glue. I'm going to use my Walnut Stain Distress Ink and I'm going to use my Line Co. brand PVA Wet White Glue. So that's what we're going to use. And it's not hard. And again, if you're using a different kind of paper or style of paper, go for it. You, again, this works with whatever you want to use. Same process. So the paper kit, and I'll link it. Now I can't remember the Etsy seller's name. I'm so sorry. But it'll be in the description. She has some beautiful Edith Holden inspired paper kits. And some are, you know, actual like eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper. I'm going to go ahead and just let, let that go. It's going to get glued down. Um, 
but some she sells as tiles. And so the one that has that really cool bird on it is a tile. So when you get the image, you get get the, get the download the image from that's a seller. It hasn't really been like made into the digital paper yet, if that makes sense. And so what her intent is selling it to people who then will take it, drop it into like Canva or Photoshop or something like that, and then piece them together to make a whole a whole piece of paper. And I know that doesn't make a lot of sense if you don't make digital paper. And I apologize because I downloaded that kit a long time ago because I like it and had played with it and made myself some paper with it, with the tiles and hadn't really thought much about it. And then I used them in a project recently um, as I was kind of preparing and getting ready for this video. And someone went and used my link, which is great, and purchased the kit, which is great, and then said, why is it the bird's head cut off? Which is a great question, and it's a reasonable question. And I realized that, the, you know, that, that's what I used from her shop. So if you're not comfortable in dropping those images, those tiles, like into an editor, and then making making your own paper, your own design, I would look in her shop for maybe some of her other kits um, or or pass. So anyway, I hope that didn't cause too much distress on anyone. I just didn't occur to me because I've had the files saved. Let's skip, skip the page that has the bottom part of your bag and just go to the next two page spread. So, Anyway, I just wanted to mention that and apologize if that messed anybody up, but they are beautiful. They are beautiful images and, and beautiful colors, birds, uh, flowers, berries, all kinds of things. And I have a few that I used in this one and that we'll use as we go today. So I definitely want to give that shop and that creator um, credit obviously tore that one a little bit smaller, but that's okay. We can always add pockets and add things to it. So anyway, ah, as it, I, I try to always remember I, to tell you guys when I get an idea from somebody else or where it came from, as long as I can remember, I don't, you know, I don't intentionally try to <laughs> not share, I guess is, um, for the other, the other folks that work hard, like on their Etsy shops too. Um, but I also want to be, not give you guys misleading information that, oh, you can just go download this kit and you've got these great papers to work with. Most of the things that I buy on Etsy are just junk journal kits ready to go. You can just print, you can maybe change the size if you want to, <laughs> you can, um, use the papers in a variety of ways but they're they're kind of ready to go papers and that's what I normally purchase and all of the kits that I sell in my shop are that way okay all right so again this takes a little bit of time but I think it gives a really nice impact. It looks pretty. And I could just work on each page individually first and lay a piece down and decide where I want the pocket. But I just kind of thought this is a fun, for me anyway, a fun way to go ahead and feel like I've made some progress. My journal's coming together. And it really starts to feel like something special with all of these fun pages. We'll come back to those. Okay, so this is one of the ones I'm skipping. So we're gonna do this page. And I hope you guys are still with me. I am um, in the process of actually trying to get a few videos filmed ahead of time. I may not get every day that I'm going to be out of town for a few days. And my husband and I are just going for a little beach getaway. He has some leave time he needs to use. And we're actually just going to Myrtle Beach, which is, I don't know, five, six-ish hours, maybe seven hours from us. I'm not exactly sure. I've been, it's been many years since I've been to, to Myrtle Beach in South Carolina. But we are going, and... 
while I'm gone, I believe, is when my collaboration video for Rachel and Bella will go live. So I'll definitely have that videoed for you guys. And a lot of times when I go out of town, I just try to have some things prepared ahead of time so that you guys still have fun content. And we'll see how I do. I told you guys it was going to get a little busy here in my life in November and December. So we may not have daily videos. We'll just see. And if that happens, don't panic. It's just because I'm busy. Um, and I'll be back. So... I just wanted you guys to know that, and that's um, next week. So we'll see how much I get done between now and then. And that way I can just enjoy being with him and relaxing and spending some time together, which everybody needs that occasionally, even though this is my happy place. I love, love, love crafting. If you guys haven't picked up on that. <laughs> I think I tell you guys that a lot. So, all right. And, oh, I know what I was going to talk about. So, again, a fairly recent video. I did another take on using the fall gratitude papers for a little mini journal. If you missed that one, go back. It's super cute. And an easy, great for, like, you know small gifts for folks, for yourself. And while I was crafting, I decided to talk about one of the gratitudes and I just randomly pulled one and I got a really nice response from you guys on that. You said you enjoyed it. So thank you. Thank you for listening. I'm trying to decide. I think we'll do some kind of flip on the back since I put that there accidentally. We won't, we won't waste it. Okay. So anyway, thank you. Thank you for the positive feedback and for letting me know that you enjoyed hearing me talk about that. We may, we may do some more as we go. In, during the month of November, I may pick one here in a few minutes. We'll, I can grab one of my journals and look at the prompts. So now let me show you how I made some of the different style flips. And they're in a little different order because of how I laid the journal out this time. But this is just a flip on the page that I did. But I want to show you how I did some of these. So we'll do this style first. So again, I'm going to grab I have some of these papers. I have, I have a lot. I have a lot of papers out here. Um, but that I used. And this is the pattern that I used on that page. This is that bird I was telling you about. So the way it comes... You don't get the whole bird. You have to put it together like a puzzle in one of the programs. So let's use some of these sunflowers. I think sunflowers are still good. They're, I know they're summery, but for me, they also kind of speak to fall. So what I did with most of these is this little piece like this. It's kind of a, an interesting odd shape. I'm just folding them over like that and just creating a flap. All right, and I mean, it, it's, it's that easy. And then I'm adding some papers to the flap to um, make you a little extra page in here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is figure out how the size I need it to be. And I, I didn't do much, much measuring at all. I used the, the bag itself to help me figure out where to tear my paper. Now I will give you a measurement in just a moment so that, you know, if you want to measure and cut yours, if your bags are the same size, size as mine, you can. So this piece of paper that's gonna make a similar flap is three and, let's see, one, two, three eighths which is just a little bit more than three and a quarter, if that makes you more comfortable, by four and three quarters. Again, that's kind of that same height I've been using. Now, I can install it this way so that when you open it up, you see the, the, the sunflowers, or I can install it this way, and you see the sunflowers on the outside. And I think I wanna see the sunflowers, so I'm gonna go ahead and ink this. And then I only printed these on one side. 
And I think some of these I left the white and others I layered some of the, the papers from the, the book on. So we'll just see. We'll see how we feel. If I leave it white, you know, we can write on it. But there's also some, some of the pages that have quite a bit of neutral. Now I do like here on this strip, I'm just going to start grabbing some of my extra pieces. Um, they're already the right height. Now see what I meant? This will be a great, great piece for journaling because it's almost all no, no print and no images on it. So for this one, I'm just going to ink around the edges and I'm going to glue this to this part of the panel right here. Make sure that can fold over. Don't go over the crease line. Just start layering all the papers and it gives it a really nice feel. And again, I think it looks great. So get that on here. And then I'm going to go ahead that's going to be glued to this little panel here. So I'm going to just glue this piece of the Edith Holden book page to the back. I'm going to make sure I put it in the right portion so that when you open it up, we see this lovely paper on the back of this sunflower paper. And this is gonna glue there. So we're gonna have this, it's almost like just a whole extra page. So I'm gonna actually add the glue to the bag. Oops, glue those little flaps down. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of doing it this way to make sure I stay out of that crease <laughs> and it's going to work. So now when we open it up, we have this extra page here. Doesn't that look fabulous? And then it turns this way. All right. Love it. So then on this side, again, we have choices. We can use some of the book page. We can use some of the papers I printed that coordinate. Uh, you could use some copy dyed paper. You know, we could add whatever. So I am going to go back. I'm thinking it'll be fun as you open this up to see some mushrooms. So get this out of the way. Let's tear the page with the holly berries off. And I'm not sure if I'm going to use those or where, but I'll definitely have it to use during this holiday season. If we don't use it today, we may make a tag out of it for our for our journal, and then I'll have it if I want to use it for, like, you know, have it in the journal, but then put it onto a gift later or something. Uh, this is how I end up with so many of these strips. Okay, so this piece in here is that the, the whole portion is that five inches, so like the four and three quarters, but I don't want to put a whole panel here and then have to crease it. I want this to be a little strip itself. So I'm gonna tear this piece that it would fit in that section and then we'll tear that strip off. So one, two, three, four, and I think to be careful, I'm gonna go to five. One, two, three, four. To five inches, I can always tear a little bit more off if I need to, it's a little bit easier. Okay. And now for this section, let me go ahead and get the height, which is gonna be that four and three quarters. One, two, three, four and three quarters. So this project, the way I'm doing it anyway, is a lot of tearing of the paper. <laughs> okay, I'm going to use my journal and I'll give you the measurement in a second to help me see how wide I need this strip. That's, that is gonna live right there on that panel and it ended up being one and seven eighths inches, almost 
two inches, right? Let's look at that one more time, make sure. No, <laughs> I said it wrong, I knew I did. I knew that's not two inches. It's almost one and a half. It's one and three eighths. But again, if you're like me and you don't want to measure, oh gosh, I forgot I was tearing this for mushrooms. All right, but that looks good, doesn't it? We're gonna add that like that. Gosh, I was so into looking at the text. I completely forgot this was my mushroom piece. All right, I'm gonna glue the text down. So, I, I don't like measuring a lot of the times, and to me, it's just so easy to craft by holding the paper, you know, and tearing and, and getting it to fit in some really fun, beautiful ways without having to worry about that. I can't believe I did that to my mushrooms. Oh my goodness. Okay, we won't worry about it. We are just going to, I think this was the piece that I had cut to fit in here. Oh goodness, Pam. You guys tell me you like it when I leave my mistakes in. So it's not a huge mistake. These look kind of cool, just kind of ripped arbitrarily on the images, but it's not how I would have done it had I not been overly talkative. Okay, it is a little bit wide and I told you it might be and I'd rather trim just a touch off than not have enough. So I'm gonna just very carefully hold that. I just took a sliver off. And I did put that sliver in my garbage can, my waste bin. I, I saved most of the strips, but even I decided that one was a little too small. I might have found something to do with it. Look at that wonderful text too. Uh, it's always, that's the struggle. And it's the struggle when I use book pages like this. It's the struggle when I have beautiful paper kits that are double-sided paper, deciding which side of the paper I'm gonna get to see and use. So, okay, I love that. I wouldn't mind a little something here to decorate the top. Maybe I will just hand tear a little strip of these yellow mushrooms and we'll just glue it down. Give it a little extra. So again, there's different things you can do with this section of the lunch bag, but I love making these extra pages. And again, if you want to, you could stick this down with a Velcro dot if, if, it, if that spoke to you. Let's see what I did with one of the other ones. This one is actually just like what I just did. Just different papers. This one, the orientation, it's basically the same thing, but the orientation was different. And then underneath, I put in this cute belly band. Let's see what I did on the third one. I may have done well the same. Yeah, basically they're all the same, just different papers and they look different. I'm trying to think what's something else we could do besides just the extra page. We could, how about a tuck spot? Why don't we turn it into just a little tiny tuck spot? That'll be fun. So let me find, let's use some of this paper here. And just so that we have some variety, not just the book page. And I am going to, again, use my journal to help me figure out, instead of measuring the size of the paper that I need. I hope that isn't making you too crazy. All right, I can see where the end of this pocket is, or the end of the book, why do I keep saying book bag? Lunch bag, there we go. So all I'm gonna do is ink and layer this onto the bottom of the lunch bag. And then we're gonna have a cute little tuck spot because we're gonna glue this together. And then it's finishing decorating and tucking things in there. Some smaller items, which will be nice. All right. Very fun. So now for this, if you guys can see, 
I didn't fold this one to, to make that little flap. I'm going to add glue to the top and bottom of this section to make that side load tuck. All right, I want to give that a moment to really stick down. I could have layered paper before I glued that down. Didn't really think about it, but that wouldn't have been a bad thing to do. But we'll just have, have it go right up to the edge. It'll be okay. And again, using the journal to help me tear my paper to the correct sizes. Isn't that so much more fun than worrying about measuring? Some of my projects, you guys know, I give you lots of measurements and to make things fit together correctly, that's important in some type of crafting and journal making. But in this one, it's just kind of, I can like turn on music or I can listen to a podcast or have even like a, another video or something um, from one of the people I like to watch their videos playing because I don't have to worry about focusing on the measurement all the time. Of course, could tear up my mushrooms that way though. All right, this is starting to get on my nerves, so we are going to give it a little bit of a haircut, and they can go shorter after I finish tying my knots, but I think it looks a little bit better having them approximately the same length. Okay, we have a flip out page. We now have a fun tuck. And then our last page ended up on the back cover. So let's just add another page here too. Why not? Let's make the back fun and different. Oh goodness. I've got fuzz sticking to my fingers. Let's use these birdies. And same thing, this was a tile. And I can kind of see where it came together. So this one, you might've gotten the head of this bird and a portion of this one. But if you put them together, you suddenly have this lovely piece of designer paper. So, let's see. All right, so again, fold this over to make this hinge almost is what, what it is. And then I know that is going to be the width from here to the edge of my journal of my extra page. And I'm gonna tear it. Ah, I'm being brave, aren't I? Okay, I'm gonna bring it down so we get this bird. All right, and it might be a little wide, and if that's the case, then I will trim it off in a moment. I'm trying to keep everything nice and straight if I can. And again, none of this, nothing about this type of junk journaling is perfection. It is all um, torn edges and fun, <laughs> in my opinion. Torn edges and fun. I am going to take another little sliver. And this time I am going to lay it on the grid to see which side. And it's this side that's the most crooked. Tear it off. Okay. So again, we're going to do the same thing. I am going to ink it and then attach it to the flap. Now, I also want to decide if I want to back this, that's going to be this extra page. I want to back this with some of the Edith Holden paper. And I think that I do. So I'm going to find a piece that has doesn't have the images or the text on it that I can use. And I'm okay losing a little bit of that green. So I'm just gonna tear this where there's no print. Again, just double checking. I want to layer it onto this side. And again, just use the page to help me get the right size and there we go easy peasy and if I wanted to I could glue it and have that little bit of leaf showing but I'm not going to <laughs> we're gonna glue it down 
All right, so I hope you guys will, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. It makes a big difference for us creators. And give the video a thumbs up, leave me a comment, tell me what you guys are up to today, what you're thinking about with the video or whatever. Love to hear from you. And we are gonna glue this down and I'm gonna then check the time and decide if I'm gonna then finish working on some of these pages and come back with a part two. We'll see, let me think about what else we have to do. We definitely have to make a fun, pretty cover, don't we? Maybe we have time today, let me peek. Mm. We're getting a little long. I still need to layer here and here. And this is gonna be the back. So probably what I'm gonna do, since this is gonna be the back cover with this extra page, is we may use Velcro dots here and even like a little tab or something to help us remember, oh, this opens. Let's do that really quick. I'll use the whale punch and I'm gonna grab one of these strips. See if this is wide enough. I think it's just wide enough. We'll get a little bit of the, I want the words, yeah. Let me see how this is gonna fit on here. I don't think it'll be too big. I just, yeah, put this right here. I don't think it hangs off too much. Let's see what it looks like from the front. It's actually kind of cute showing from the other side. So let's bring it up here and let it hang over. I think it'll be all right. And then I don't want to add the glue dots yet because I haven't layered any paper here yet. And if I put a glue dot, it'll end up getting covered, you know, covered up. Okay, so to finish this one up, we definitely need to decorate the front cover, decide if we want some other kind of closure, or just leave it open. And then I want to add pockets or flips and things to the pages. But you know, we can do that together in a part two. I might, what I might do off camera is I might go ahead and just make a few more of these types of tags. These are kind of just using the different papers, piecing them together, adding ribbons, things like that, so that we have some fun things to tuck inside. I've got lots of videos on how to make ephemera and tags. So um, if, if I do something kind of different or unique, I may show you one of those. This is just folded over with a piece of ribbon. I can always untie it and open up the whole page if I decide to. So I think that's what we'll do. Part two, we will add the pockets, flip more flips, different ways, and decorate the front. And um, I may layer this off camera too, we'll see. But I hope you guys are enjoying it. Please let me know, and please let me know if you'd like other videos showing you how to use lunch bags in your crafts. So thanks a bunch. I appreciate you guys being here. Until next time, have a great one.